Hello there, and welcome back to the channel. This is Mel's Gaming here with another The Hunter Call of the Wild video. Now, today's video, as by popular request, is going to be an American alligator guide. Basically, I'm going to go through, show you guys how I actually take these guys down, show you my favourite spots for them, and just answer a couple of questions that you guys have been asking about the American alligators. Now, I had to start off with this clip as the intro, because whilst I was out recording some clips for this video, I had a really neat encounter. And this also basically goes over something else I wanted to cover. And as you guys will see, as I'm spotting this level 7, it does indeed say he is aggressive. Now, there are a couple of different states that the alligators can go into. They can be full-on aggressive like this, or they can be defensive, which is basically the same thing. They will just go towards you, take a snap at you, and then normally flee. I've had that a couple of times. But there is also this state where they go on full aggro, and they will actually charge at you and try and snap at you multiple times. So it's basically just like two levels of aggression, but this is my first time actually seeing one being really full on aggro and this was really cool to actually see. Now after a while he did actually end up fleeing so I decided I would just take a couple of shots at him with the M1 as he isn't anything that I would want to keep for the trophy lodge anyway and just try and bring him down. Now thankfully I did end up making a couple of good hits on him there and after not very long I'm going to check the map and you guys will see from the hunting pressure that I did actually bring him down from those couple of shots. Again, not something I was going to be interested in keeping for the trophy lodge, only a level 7 and definitely only a common, he's actually the olive uh, colour type. So yeah, nothing I'm going to keep so I'm not too worried about that one sinking, but definitely a cool little display of the aggressive mode there. So one of the most popular questions was where are my favourite spots to hunt the alligators and where do I have my tents and tree stands actually set up on the map for them. Now I did cover my favourite spots for these guys in my Mississippi guide which if you haven't seen will have been the video I posted before this one but I will quickly go over my favourite spots again and you will also have the times for the American alligators there in the bottom left corner. So the west coast here is one of my absolute favourite spots to hunt the male American alligators all the way from my tent down here all the way up to where I just placed that waypoint. This little section of the river just above the Horseshoe Bend or in the Horseshoe Bend area is also a particular favourite. This little area here where there's a couple of rest zones and a feed zone is very very shallow and is a good way to get a couple of extra gators down. And this whole area where I'm dragging my cursor around is very shallow and gives really good opportunities to bag quite a number of gators. I've also set up a tent and a tree stand in this little area here. Again, very shallow and there's a good number of gators moving through the area. So you can just sit in a tree stand and pop them off while they're either feeding or resting. Then moving across to this little area. And again, this little bit that comes off the river here is a really good little spot to hunt the alligators. You are going to have a really good time actually seeing a few of them here while they're resting. Definitely prefer hunting them while they're resting in this particular spot. Whilst they're led up on the banks of the, the river there, it's very easy to hunt them. And this area here, you can see all these rest zones are for alligators again. And you can see I do have a tent and a tree stand set up here. And I will sit in this tree stand and hunt them as they're getting into their rest zones and also while they're moving through at their feed time. Then heading up to the couple of lakes where you can find the American alligators. And this lake in particular is one of my favourites for the American alligators. And as you can see, I've been actually hunting a few of them at just when I was recording this. And also this little one here does also hold a few male alligators for me, so definitely a spot worth checking. But by far my favourite lake for the American alligators on the entire map, specifically for male alligators, is this lake here. Lake Panola, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, is a fantastic, very shallow lake that holds a good number of male alligators. 
and as you can see I have a tree stand in the middle of the lake which if you walk in from this direction where I'm dragging my cursor you can walk straight out into that point in the lake it's so shallow you can just walk straight to it and then from that tree stand you can shoot the alligators when they're in the water whilst they're either moving to their rest zones or whilst they're actually in their feed zones. I found both of those ways to be pretty effective and I'll go into a little bit more detail about hunting this particular spot from the tree stand a little bit later on in the video. But now we've looked at my favourite locations on the map for specifically hunting male alligators, let's now take a look at where I like to place a shot to bring these guys down immediately. So this is something a lot of people have been struggling with with the American alligators. You do want to insta drop these guys if you want to ensure you're not going to lose a trophy. So we're going to act like this level 7 is a level 9 or some kind of rare that I really don't want to lose. So as you can see we've snuck in quite close to him here which is actually fairly easy to do with alligators as long as you're not moving around really quickly and you keep an eye on your wind direction and you make sure that your scent isn't blowing straight onto the animal they're actually pretty easy to get close to. So imagining that this is a level 9, this is the sort of situation I would want it to be in. Lead with its head down or with its mouth open ideally and just lead broadside. And now I'm going to keep my reticle in the top third of this alligator's neck and as you can see I dropped him on the spot. Now we'll walk over to him and we will actually take a look at exactly where I placed that shot in a little bit more detail. This is my favourite shot to go for on the American Alligators. It is incredibly reliable and I just seem to be able to hit this one better than I can hit brain and heart on them, at least very consistently. So as you can see where that bullet wound is, it's sort of just behind where the, sm like the smile in the jawline is. If you follow that line up and then it's the top third of the neck. That's always the rule that I say to people is keep your shot in the top third of the neck and you should be pretty good. And from what I've heard from people that seems to be pretty helpful and it's helped them to land neck shots. So when you're looking, looking at an alligator and it's led broadside to you, keep it sort of behind that jawline and then top third of the neck. And as long as you hit the neck bone, you'll be absolutely fine. As you can see, I've started to be able to actually hit the cervical spinal cord, which is an even better shot because that insta kills them completely. A neck shot takes a couple of seconds. They're not going to have chance to move, but a spinal cord shot will kill them instantly. And you're going to see me taking that shot on a couple of different alligators in a couple of different situations, including some that are actually resting in the water. Now, something I have to stress to you guys is if you are hunting a level 9 or a rare, do not risk any other shot than the first shot I just displayed with the animal completely on land and broadside. It is just simply not worth the risk. I have managed to down a couple of alligator piebalds whilst they've been resting in the water, such as this one here, but it's really just not worth the risk of that shot going wrong on a trophy alligator. You can practice it and if you get really comfortable with it then definitely that is a shot that you can go for once you know what you're looking for. But if you're just not quite confident with making that shot, it's just simply not worth it. Just wait for these guys to be on land. Because with the American alligators, as I'm sure most of you will know at this point, if they get into too deep water, they will sink and you're going to lose your trophy. So as you can see, I just dropped that one there with a neck shot actually from the 300. And then because I'm just grinding these guys and I know that these ones are commons, I then just take a couple of pop shots at them to down them whilst they're over that deep water. Now, these were a couple of really lucky shots, I think, where I actually managed to get two instant kills. But you can see one of them actually floated whilst the other one sunk. So that's why I wouldn't recommend trying to shoot any kind of trophy alligator whilst it's in the water. Just in case it does that sinking animation, it's just not worth the risk. But obviously with smaller alligators or non-rare alligators that you aren't worried about losing, you can of course take these shots and just see if you can hit them. I'm getting better at hitting the neck shots whilst they're actually resting in the water. Obviously their necks at a slightly different angle so it's a slightly different shot angle but again keeping to that top third and behind the jaw seems to be working pretty well for me with making those shots too. 
Now, there's talk about weapons for the American alligator. So the American alligator is a class six animal. And from my own testing and from what I've seen from other people, there seem to be four main guns that people use for these guys. Those being the 303, the M1, the 7mm and the muzzle loader. Now, I personally haven't used the muzzle loader or the 303. The muzzle loader, I've seen a lot of people going for lung shots on these guys with it because it does have that bit more power, so it does bring them down quicker than, say, a long shot from the M1. However, I still wouldn't risk doing that on a trophy gator. Again, you do want to try and make that drop shot. Now, between the 7mm and the M1 and 303, there's a bit of debate. A lot of people think the best rifles for them, for the Gators out of those three would be either the M1 or the 303, simply because the M1 and the 303 have much quicker follow-up shots than the 7mm. Now, I think of the Alligators in a bit of a different way. If I mess up a shot on a level 9 and I don't hit its neck, I don't want to fling a shot into it hoping that I'll hit a vital and bring it down quick enough whilst it's running away. I would much rather wait for that animal to turn around and come back because a flesh shot with the M1 or the uh, the 7mm isn't going to actually kill it. It will just eventually come back to where it was resting. It can take a little while, as I mentioned, it can be a patience game with these guys, but I would much rather wait for a second shot than rush a second shot and mess up a trophy. So for me, something like the 7mm is actually a really good weapon. I like the amount of power it has behind it, and it's actually quite good at getting through and making those neck shots. There's nothing wrong with the M1, you'll notice me using it quite a lot in these videos, and I actually carry the M1 simply because when I'm grinding gators, sometimes I will take multiple shots at one while it's running if it's not a trophy gator. And I will say that again, if it is not a trophy. If it's something like this level 7, and I'm just trying to bring it down for the sake of effectiveness, then yes, I will put multiple shots into it with, an, with the M1. But if it's a trophy alligator, so say this was a level 9 here in front of us, I'm going to wait and I'm going to try and get that perfect neck shot. If it doesn't pay off, I'm going to let that gator run off and turn around and come back and take a second shot. And I have successfully done that with rares and with diamonds. I have flesh wounded them and they have come back after a little bit of, of patience and waiting. So that is definitely my recommendation with that. But whichever weapon you choose is personal choice. As I said, these guys are a class 6, so just make sure that your weapon is covering weapon uh, weapon class 6 and you will be absolutely fine with using that weapon. My personal recommendation would be the 7mm or the M1. Those are just the two rifles I particularly like using on them. And I also will sometimes use the 300 on these guys whilst I'm grinding them. It is not an ethical weapon for the American alligator. The 300 is not ethical for these guys. But if I'm grinding them and I'm just looking to get numbers down, similar to how I ground Whitetail and Red Deer for the Great One grinds, I will just use a 300 just to bring them down a little bit quicker and try and get some more on the ground. So if you're just grinding them, looking for a legendary or looking for some rares, don't be afraid to use the 300. Of course, being not ethical, you will lose some trophy score, but if it's a smaller gator, it really doesn't matter that much. It's more important to get the respawn. Now, this is an interesting little bit of behaviour that I've noticed from hunting these guys a lot, is that quite often while they're coming into a rest zone, they will quite often stop and yawn. And it's normally they'll yawn twice as well. They'll do one yawn and then another and then carry on on their way. And I absolutely love that piece of behaviour. It's something I haven't seen talked about a whole lot, but alligator yawns are the coolest thing. And whilst they're coming into a rest zone, it's just so perfect. And as you can see, this guy lies down here, to, now he's resting, and he's giving me my absolutely favourite shot, which is while they actually have their mouth open. This seems to always pay off really well. If they have their mouth open like that, I almost always land that perfect neck shot. I don't know why, it just seems to make their neck at a slightly better angle. 
and you can see got the back of the skull here but also the upper neck and that was with the m1 same as the previous gator and this guy is a nice gold so hopefully these have given you enough shot examples of the shot that i go for on these guys and just to demonstrate what i was talking about before about using the 300 and just flinging shots at them while they're running this is of course a level 7 so has no chance at making diamond and I know he's not a rare, I just want to get him down for the respawn. So I'm just going to use the 300 and put a couple of shots in him and hopefully he will end up end up dropping. And thankfully I did actually hit a vital organ on him there and because this spot is so, sh uh, so shallow as I showed on the map, he can't go anywhere, he's not going to make it to the deeper water. Now, as you will have just seen me show that on the map, we are now at Lake Panola. And this is to answer a question that a lot of you guys had about how I hunt these guys from a tree stand. So, as you will see, we have a level 6 swimming around in front of us here. And using the M1, I'm going to lead the shot just a little bit and go for a neck shot. Now, again, it's the same placement, keeping to the top third of that neck, but just behind the jaw. And again, it seems to be pretty effective. Now, with that shot, I thought that I kind of messed it up, so I took a second shot at it quickly, and it actually ended up being a neck shot, and then I think it was lung, so that one was very, very dead. Now, you can see there's another alligator swimming around out here, so once again, I'm just going to try and work out the lead that I want to put on him, and once again, making a neck shot and dropping him there. And then what happens once you've dropped the gator, wh whether it was an instant kill shot or whether it took a couple of shots, as long as it's dead, it should float. Or I've not had a single gator on this lake actually sink. I just don't think it's actually deep enough. It just, like, even with lung shots, they seem to swim around, even if it's under the water, and then float up after a few seconds. So this is why this particular lake is a real favourite of mine, just because of how shallow it is. And you can see, in most places, that gators are actually running so again it just goes to show how shallow it is and even here while that one is swimming i managed to make a shot on him there which was actually a kill shot and it seems that again with this lake being shallow that the water doesn't seem to block your shots anywhere near as much as it does in other places now i've switched there to use the 300 but again same shot placement and again, you can see these guys floating in from where I just killed them. And it's such an effective way of hunting them. I didn't come up with this method of hunting them. I will say that again. I saw this being posted about in the Facebook group, the official Hunter Facebook group. And I decided I'd give it a try myself. And sure enough, it's been paying off really, really well. You can see getting a good number of gators. These clips are from a couple of different hunts. Just trying to show you guys the shot placements that I'm making on them whilst they're swimming around like this. But something about the tree stand and just how, how shallow and great this lake is seems to make hunting them from a tree stand an absolute breeze. And all you need to do is find an area where it is nice and shallow and you can see for a good way. And I have found that either hunting them in their feed time or just before their rest time when they're basically heading into their rest zones are both really good times for when you're hunting them like this from a tree stand. Now I'm going to answer the last question that I had being asked whilst we still up on a pretty cool alligator. Now I found this guy last night, I ended up taking a shot at him as he was trying to disappear off into the water but didn't end up killing him and eventually ended up with resetting the time and everything, resetting the game to get him back into his rest zone and as you can see he is a pretty cool alligator that is a level 8 piebald gator. Now, unfortunately, this is the low pie pattern, the same as my other mythical, but it is still cool to see good size rares turning up on this rare grind. And once again, taking them out with a neck shot. But this kind of helps answer the question, which a lot of you guys were asking, how do I find so many alligators? How am I seeing so many alligators? Well, I will tell you that 99% of the time, I'm hunting them in their rest zones like this. Especially in multiplayer, I will hunt them in their rest zones and then just look around wherever there's a bank near water. Along that west coast, if you just follow the bank, there's gators littered up that coast. If you walk along the river and look on the banks, you'll find them resting on there. And of course, on the banks of the lakes as well. So that is really, it is that simple. Once you learn where they are, those areas that I've shown, 
and you just go there when they're resting you'll find tons of them and that's exactly what i did when i saw this guy i knew that i saw a piebald swimming around out there whilst i was actually grinding and basically i said it to their rest time walked around the lake found his rest zone and boom managed to actually eventually get him once i'd found out where he was exactly resting and then actually take him down so that is my top tip is hunt them in their rest zones especially if you're going into multiplayer Obviously, if you're doing the tree stand hunting like I just showed off before, as I said, the feed zones can work as well, but mainly hunting the rest zones for these guys is the way to go. Now, to finish off the video, I thought I would do something which will hopefully be interesting for you guys, and that is go through and take a look at all five of the piebald variations that at least I have seen and found for the American alligators. I have not seen another pattern posted or found by anyone, so as far as I know, these are all of the piebald variations for the American alligator in the Hunter Call of the Wild. Starting off with this pattern, which is one of my two favourites, it is absolutely stunning with a good sort of white there patching in with like an olive green colour. It's really, really beautiful and it's just what you think of, I think, as a classic piebald and I really like how the white accentuates the olive green colour. My other favourite pattern is this one, which I saw someone calling the Oreo piebald, which I think is so fitting, as you have that darker brown colour with the white. So you can see that this is almost like a dark brown piebald compared to like an olive piebald with the previous one. And again, this one is absolutely stunning. A lot of white on this pattern, which is really, really cool, but I like the almost tiger stripe sort of dark brown patches as well. So coming back over to this guy and we're going to go through my trophies and put down another piebald. So this is the same piebald pattern as the mythical you guys will have seen me kill in the video. This is the low white or low pied, I have been told both versions so I'll go with both, version of the piebald variations for the American alligator. Basically it's the one that has the least amount of white on it, so it's the least piebald looking. And you can see there's a lot of white around the face and also one of the feet has a sort of white splotch on it as well. But most of the markings are around the lower jaw and one side of the face. It's kind of unfortunate because there's a lot of uh, piebald markings on the underside that you can't actually see when displaying it like this. Now, this is the first of the two extreme high white or high pied variations for these guys, where it is mostly white with a couple of small greenish brown patches on them. And there is actually two versions of this exact same pattern. And the main difference, and we're going to actually take a look at it, is actually in the face. So I'm going to get the camera out and let you guys have a really good look at the patterning on the face of this alligator. Because this is the difference between this pattern and the very similar pattern you guys are going to see next. And this is why a lot of people thought there were only four piebald variations for these guys. Because those two patterns are so similar. And it was only when I put them side by side in the lodge I could actually see the difference. There are some differences throughout the body as well, and we will also take a look at those, but the main differences are in the facial markings. So let's swap this guy out for the other very high white slash high piebald version of this pattern, because they are very similar, like I said, but they are definitely different. So once again, I'm going to get the camera out so that you guys can take a look at the facial markings on this guy. And hopefully it will be quite obvious the difference. And you can probably see why when you're actually out hunting these guys, it is incredibly hard to tell the difference between these two patterns, the last one and this guy. Because they are very similar, but there are noticeable differences once you compare them in the trophy lodge. And as I said, this is why people thought there were only four piebald patterns when there is in fact actually five. My favourite way to actually tell the two versions of this very similar pattern apart is that this one has like a blotch almost between the eyes. Hopefully you guys can see what I mean there as I'm dragging the reticle around. But that splotch is very sort of noticeable, at least to me, on this specific version of the pattern compared to the previous version that we just looked at. Both of them are stunning. I love all of the piebald variations, in fact, for the alligators. 
but hopefully that shows you guys the difference in all five variations that there are for them. There are of course as well albinos and melanistics. I am hoping to try and bag one of those each as well. Obviously the albino is completely white, it doesn't have any uh, markings like the piebalds do and the melanistic is completely black. So hopefully we'll be able to get those and I'll be able to show you guys those on the channel at a later date. But I think it's really interesting to actually see a number of different piebald variations for one animal. Because in Call of the Wild we're only used to seeing maybe one or two different piebald variations per species. And this is definitely breaking new ground with five different patterns. But that is going to be it for this video guys. I hope you have enjoyed it. I hope it has been in some way useful into answering some of your questions. And again, if you do have any further questions, please do feel free to leave them down in the comments. And I will, as always, do my best to answer them as best as I can. Thank you so much, as always, for all your support. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.